Hey, welcome back to Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot. This is the th third episode now, I think, yeah, of creating a bass jig from scratch. The first episode, we went over CAD, how I designed up the football head jig, half ounce that we wanted to pour in urethane. Second episode was how we actually took that from the 3D printer and we made something in physical space we could fish with. And now this episode is, we got all these bass jigs with weed guards, but we have no skirt for them, and you need a skirt on a bass jig. I mean, I guess you don't technically, but I do because I catch more fish with it. I'm the worst bass fisherman on the planet. So I think for the breadth of this video, what we're going to do is I'm going to jump into Fusion 360. I'll show you the overall design that I used for a rotary cutter to cut the actual skirts. And then I'll go into a little bit on how I made a tool to thread the skirts. First off, I think I should explain how I'm making this material because you can't just buy sheets of silicone. I tried. I tried really hard. So what we're going to be using here is Dragon Skin 10. It's a silicone. It's a one-to-one -one part from Smooth-On Silicone. I'm using, I think, the, the medium or the fast versions of Dragon Skin 10. I bought the trial size. It just comes in two small little uh, bottles to use. So then I just bought a trial size of all the different pigments for the slick pig for silicone and that had all range of different colors and I just played around with those colors. There wasn't really a rhyme or reason for this for me uh, size wise or how much I wanted to do. I was just kind of testing it out. So a lot of times I would just mix up silicone to a certain color that I thought was good. I would throw in some glitter into that mixture and then all I'm doing is I'm just pouring it out between two sheets of wax paper. The wax paper proved to be pretty important in this because uh, although silicone doesn't stick to anything, it will get into the cracks of things. So if you put it on some like plywood or something, it's going to get inside of there, it's gonna set up inside of there. And although the silicone's not sticking specifically, it's just kind of like a friction hold on anything that it sets up on. And then all I did was I poured out the color that I wanted on the center of the wax paper and I rolled it out in between two sheets of wax paper like you would roll out dough or something. Then I would let that set uh, at the thickness that I wanted. I'd roll it out to, you know, about an eighth of an inch or smaller depending on kind of what I would thought. If you go too thin, like maybe construction paper thin, it almost becomes too thin to have really good action on the skirt. So I kind of liked it to be a little bit thicker. So something like the 1 16th of an inch range, I would say maybe three millimeters. If you can roll it to three to four millimeters thick, uh, the skirt that ends up being cut seems to work really, really well. You can get creative with this too. You can mix up one color and then another. I did that a couple times. Also, the silicone accepted uh, glitter quite well. So I just used Hobbycraft glitter here. You don't have to use the, the real crazy expensive soft plastic glitter because we're not heating anything up to make these skirts. Yeah don't buy the expensive stuff. Yeah, so then I had to figure out how to cut these things. I tried it with just an X-Acto knife at first, then I actually made a whole little race car design with a bunch of small razors. I made a press die that I thought would work, that I could press it down onto the silicone. The problem with silicone is that it's so resistant to a lot of things, especially like a tear force or shear force, I guess that would be called. I'm not an engineer, but either way, you try and push it on there, it just pushes itself away. So it kind of squeezes out of the sides. So none of those options were really working. And I posted on to my Instagram that I was just having a lot of problems with the cricket not holding the silicone down because silicone doesn't stick to anything naturally. You run it through the cricket to try and get it to cut and it'll start coming up. Then it starts getting cut on the blades and there's just a, a, a massive problem with that. And then uh, the guys from Dead On Plastic actually uh, added me on a comment on Instagram and suggested that I try something like a rotary cutter. So that was pretty eye-opening for me. I thought that's a really good idea. I actually had the rotary blade in the Cricut Maker, so I tried a few skirts with that and it worked a lot better, although it still did raise up and cut additional cuts as it went through. Um, but it did work much better than the razor. So then I decided that instead of trying to mess around with all this, I was just going to design a rotary cutter that could cut an entire skirt in one go, and we could use it with our hands. So we'll just jump into Fusion 360, and I'll show you what I did. 
All right, so this is the rotary cutter design that I came up with in Fusion 360. You can see it here. I don't think I'm gonna go through all the ins and outs of how I designed this. Just know that it's a lot of pieces. It took a while to do, and it's still not the best design in the world. But all it is is just a, essentially like you would see a fabric cutter if you go to your local Joann's or something like that. And it just utilizing these, I think they're like 20, millimeter like one inch rotary cutting blades and they're just lined up right in here it has a small axle down here through the center and then this outside housing that is actually holding everything together that's just a 608 bearing, like a skateboard bearing with this internal axle that holds all of these together. There's also, if you can see on the inside, it's hard to do, little spacers that I print out at 0.4 millimeters apart that are keeping these apart on the axle. So then it's evenly spaced in the middle. If I was better at putting this together, it would perform better, but for right now it works pretty well. As long as you can hold it down with some force and pull it, seems to be cutting really well so i don't think i'll go over too much on how i created this because there's a lot to this ins and outs but overall um there's a few things that i would take home from this if you were trying to do something similar to this i would probably cap these bearings off these are just super glued in on the outside race works fine for now but on the next iteration i would probably cap this with some sort of a containment area so the axle couldn't drop out of the bottom although I haven't had any problems with it yet uh, the super glue has held up just fine so far because we had the skirt material for the jig now we needed a collar to keep it on the jig so you can buy jig collars you can also make it out of surgical tubing if you want to but the jig collars are so cheap off of eBay it's similar to like the last video where I suggested just buying the nylon weed guards it's so simple and so cheap to buy it off of the eBay that have somebody else either cut it out of the surgical tubing or make their own silicone or whatever they're doing that I just bought a bunch online because they're so cheap. So once we have the jig collar itself, we need to actually get that skirt material inside the collar so then we can thread it onto the bass jig. That's kind of tough to do, but they do make skirt threading tools and I decided that we have 3D printers, so let's just make our own skirt threading tool. So not a whole lot to it. Just got a hole through it. I'll show you. All it does is connect with a thread. Nothing fancy there, real simple. All this is doing is allowing you to put an O-ring over the top, unscrew the nose cone, and then put the skirt material through, and then drop the O-ring back on it. And that allows you to have all your skirt material in one, one go that then you can put into your jig. So real simple design. There's no reason why I thought I needed to spend money on that. So we just made it with a 3D printer. So now we should have a functioning bass jig. So it's pretty simple there. You match up your colors on your jig skirt that you want. You roll the O-ring back over so you have a, a nice jig skirt made, ready to go. And then you just thread that onto your shank over the collar of your jig and you're ready to rock. I'm gonna use these constantly out on the river or out in big sticks on lakes and stuff where I'm going to lose a lot. And I know now that this is significantly cheaper. So we'll crunch the numbers a little bit here. I'll do a price breakdown right here and you can see how much it was for all the hooks, the jig collars and all of that. And then also the silicone and the base materials. I'm not going to factor in having a 3D printer or having a CNC or anything like that if you did choose to go that route to make molds. Um, there are economical ways to get your designs printed. So you can start working in CAD for free and you can have a 3D printing service print you a mold box as well at a reasonable price. My 3D printer personally has paid for itself like six times over at this point. All four of them at this point have paid for themselves. Not because I work as a business at all, just because I use those things constantly to make things that I didn't have to buy, so. But anyway, if we factor in 
the cost of the bear hooks themselves, the jig collars, and then we factor in the base cost of the silicone and the urethane and the bird shot, we're left with this. So that total to me is indicative of why I don't like shopping at big box stores. If I can have a custom half ounce football head jig and I can make it for that price, there's no way I'm going to go back out and buy it unless it's on super sale at some big box store. If I know I can catch fish on these and I know I can lose them constantly and I don't have to worry about taking out a second mortgage for it, I call it a success. So hopefully you guys found this as entertaining as I did to make. Hopefully it was educational in some way or you did like it. If you did, make sure to give it a like and also consider subscribing. We're going to have one more video left in this series and that's going to be, uh, I'm going to take those molds that I made before for the urethane and we're actually going to make lead. Then I've made five lead versions now and they're about three quarters of an ounce. So they're pretty heavy, obviously because that urethane's not in there anymore. So there's an actual dense lead in there. If you have any questions or anything, comments, please leave it down below. I'd appreciate it. And until the next one, keep your amps up and your filament dry. Into the black.